to namaste welcome i am gloria grace rand and i'm delighted to have a special guest with us on the live love engage podcast he is someone that i met let's see not quite a year ago i think and a brilliant young man who is all about helping folks with their finances so his name is denzel rodriguez and he is a 24 year old entrepreneur born and raised in queens new york by a single mother and from a young age he felt compelled to learn about finances not something every young boy does so kudos for you right there um, and his first client was his mom and now he's known as the finance geek specializing in helping moms become debt free to increase cash flow build credit and establish kingdoms that will last forever and he's currently helping over 475 families across the united states and abroad to master their finances by using something called velocity banking infinite banking and kingdom authority in their household and if you're wondering why i keep mentioning kingdom it's because Denzel is an honorable, passionate, and powerful man who credits all his success and wisdom to God. And he spends most of his time teaching financial concepts on his YouTube channel, which has over 1 million views and 12,000 plus subscribers. I only wish I did, but I'll get there. <laughs> and as I mentioned, yeah, Denzel is just really passionate about helping to expand and grow the kingdom of God uh, by helping mothers to master their finances so that they can not only build kingdoms of their own, but raise a new generation that values women and their position in authority. So welcome Denzel to Live, Love, Engage first off. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate that intro. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? Uh, you've earned it. You've definitely earned it. So uh, I think you brought the words to life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think it teases a little bit about, or at least how you're helping women maybe, but why is it specifically um, that you want to help moms in particular uh, to be able to master their finances? Something that I do think is really important myself as a woman and a mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, really it's a lot of it is uh, personal but I also feel that through these personal experiences that I've had in my own household with my mom it has also led me to my actual purpose in life so I truly believe that uh, my purpose in life is to help women or to be very specific mothers with their finances and uh, my testimony is being able to help my mom who's, you know, that, that person that everybody, you know, really relies on in the household is mom. Mom is like the, is like that anchor, you know, uh, always someone you can turn to always someone that just somehow knows the right answer. Even if they don't know how to do it themselves, they can at least provide that correct pathway. Like, Hey, don't do that. Stick to this. Hey, don't put your hands on the stove. It's hot. You know, <laughs> right. like that leads to just the best advice that we can ever get. So uh, experiencing the this new relationship with my mom, which is being able to have an intelligent conversation about money mm -hmm. in the household and her actually listen, someone that is, you know, over the age of 50 and here's a 21, 22 year old at the time, I'm 24 now, but like 20, 21 at the time when I started introducing her these concepts uh what a what a roadblock that was it took about two years mm -hmm. for her to you know uh understand what i was saying you know and once i discovered my spiritual gift from god which is that ability to communicate to a wiser person or an older person that would normally require experience if you're to talk to someone like say someone like yourself if if, if i want to work with you you want to see some experience you want to right. see some stats like like, like you know <laughs> yeah and you know all i can say is you know, i know what i'm talking about uh, uh, uh i've only been doing it for a couple months you know but i i know this could i know this can work yeah. you know that's not a whole lot to go off of <laughs> but 
you know, I truly believe that God blessed me with the wisdom first before the experience. Mm -hmm. He gave me the wisdom to understand and be able to relate to mom more than anyone in the household. Mm -hmm. And so with that dynamic new relationship I had with my mom, I was able to expand on that and thrive in the marketplace by reaching out to other mothers. Cause I figured, well, if I can do it well for my own mom, there's gotta be others out there that are just like my mom, my ideal client yeah. that I can serve. Yeah. And here we are today, you know, 2020, we're in the midst of a crisis and, you know, I've been helping hundreds of families, mostly mothers, mm -hmm. uh, just really understand the financial game that we live in the financial, you know, society where everything is driven, you know, by money and being able yeah. to understand it yeah, and absolutely. not, and, and, and not be uh, tied to it. Mm -hmm. actually not have to depend on money rather money depends on you and yeah. your ability to you know deliver and provide value to the marketplace yeah absolutely and i think it, it is important for women in particular i think too often especially well women who are maybe are, are married to a man or in in a relationship with a man a lot of times we have have tended to uh, just let them manage the money and and not be too involved in you know different aspects of it but i know my mom actually balanced our checkbook so i learned how to balance a checkbook from her but they still didn't really they didn't really talk about investing or anything like that right. and and i know even myself that i'd never learned that much about it so now i'm educating myself now because realizing that, you know, I don't, as I'm getting older, my husband's getting older. I don't know how, you know, long things can happen. And as we're seeing even right now with, uh, as we're recording this, we're in this middle of this global pandemic, that it's important to be able to um, understand money and to be able to manage it ourselves. So um, I want to go in, in a little bit. I want you maybe to explain a little bit more of, exactly about maybe what you do but right now there are a lot of people who are out of work right you know certainly right here in the united states as well as around the world um people are are scrambling and just and you know the stock market has been up and down and up and down and it's crazy right. <laughs> so what advice do you have for people who are just trying to even just keep their head above water right now so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll gear this answer uh, towards mothers, towards women in general. Mm -hmm. um, now is the perfect time to start realigning with your, I should say, your roots. Mm -hmm. where, where, where does this all begin in your household? Everybody has two economies. We have the global economy right? Which everyone is a part of. Right. And then there's your household economy, your own personal economy. And something to understand is that the global economy could be in a pandemic, but your own personal household could be thriving. Mm. And, and I'm a witness to that. You know, my household is thriving in the midst of a global pandemic which would seem like everybody is hurting. Right. But when you understand your roots, where you come from, what your purpose is in life, understand that your gift will make room for you in society so that you can continue to thrive. And so I'm going to use this time to share the most powerful story that all women need to hear right now, especially in a crisis. Mm. And I'm going to use you know, scripture and the Bible to basically back this up because that is my referencing point when there are things that I don't understand fully mm -hmm. that I need guidance on right. and some higher form of wisdom that I can, you know, rely on or turn back to, to, to receive guidance on how to move through uncharted territory, which is what the whole world is going through right now. We're, we are all entering uncharted territory. Yeah. Never before have we seen multiple countries go on lockdown. Yeah. Airlines, lockdown, hotels, lockdown, cruise lines, clubs, churches, yeah. lockdown. <laughs> right. What do you do? Right. Yeah. So 
When it comes to women, I want to share with you all that if you go back to the beginning in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were created by God, something that is so interesting that women need to hear is your role in society, your authority, which is what I cover, kingdom authority, and, and the actual powers and instincts that women have to get us out of a crisis, okay? So the Bible is very clear on how women came to be, how the first woman came to be, and what her role and duties were. And so just to break it down a little bit, the order was, was God, then God made Adam in his own image, and then he took a piece of Adam and created the woman, mm -hmm. right? Right. In order for me to share the role and the authority and purpose of women, I have to do it through the male first. So when God made Adam, he created him in his own image, not physical image, but right. characteristics. Mm -hmm. I'm going to define some things as I talk. So image means characteristics, the characteristics of a what? A king, an almighty God. Mm -hmm. That's how he made Adam. Well, when God made Adam, he gave him some assignments some things to do, right? He said, you need to work. The definition of work means become. Mm. Become means to self-manifest, to become who you are, mm. not nine to five work for the man struggle. Mm. No, work means becoming who you are and fulfilling your purpose in this life. So that's the first assignment he gave man, work. Second thing he gave him was to take care of the garden, mm. right? Protect right. it. Right. Third thing being protect, take care, manage. And he also gave the responsibility of the garden of Eden, of the territory. And he also gave Adam dominion. Dominion means authority over a piece of territory, ownership, right? And rulership over a piece of territory being Eden. So here he's given God all these assignments, right? All these things mm -hmm. to do. And then God looks at the environment and says, it's not right for Adam to be alone. It's not good. So yeah. I'm going to create, I'm going to build and make him a helper. So we have to define helper. Okay. Helper root word is, is uh, Ezer. Okay. I think, I believe in Hebrew, mm -hmm. the word helper that we're going to go off of the original definition in this meeting that we're having right now for all the women that are going to hear this is the helper is someone who is as strong mm -hmm. or stronger <laughs> than a person who is requesting the help originally, mm -hmm. right? Okay, yeah. So what women need to understand, especially in times of crisis, is that the woman is built to help people who are not as strong as you. So if we're looking in the garden of Eden, there's only two individuals in the garden. You got Adam and you got Eve. Adam came first and he was given all these assignments and he's, you know, he's got to work. He's got to do this. He got to do that. He's becoming, <laughs> he's becoming who he's supposed to be. But when God made Eve, the woman, he built her. He didn't create her mm. in order to create something. You have to start from nothing. That's true. Right. If you build something, you're, you're using existing materials. Yes. So when God created Eve, he didn't make a lesser product. He didn't make a less valuable product. If we right. look at any company in the United States, any company around the world, the first product is not necessarily the best one. Right. If, if the, when the iPhone 12 comes out, <laughs> it's going to be better than iPhone 11. Right. Yes. Same exact mentality God had. He created Adam and then he started on his next project and he 10 X <laughs> is what I say and created and built the woman out of existing materials. So if someone is built out of existing materials, those existing materials are now going to be forged into something mm -hmm. that can bring a better result. Right. Okay. So it's very, this is key for women to understand that you have been built. If you're built, that means you're equipped. 
-hmm. If you're equipped, that means you know how to do things already. Mm, that's right. That means that the work is already done. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is provide the help, right? Yeah. If I, if, if I need to lift a piece of furniture and, and I say, I need help, I need someone who's as strong yeah. or stronger than me. Right. If I'm in a crisis, a global crisis, an, an ec economic crisis, I need someone who's as strong or stronger than me in finances and health so that I can stay alive and survive. Right. That is what the woman is to society. Another definition for helper is someone who is vital in rescuing and supporting. Mm. Rescuing and support. This is key stuff. It is. <laughs> this right here is going to save thousands of households from, uh, from death, from global uh, economic pandemics, uh, financial crisis, health, everything. When, when, when the woman gets this because she is going to be able to keep the house strong and help the man do what he has to do and keep the kids and the children safe. Right. Yes. So this is, this is, you know, when I discovered this and I was able to, you know, identify my gift, I, I merged the two together and I said, okay, this is what I got to do. I got to share yeah. the most powerful story that all women need to hear. And I'm going to do it through finances. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to attract them in with money because money's very attractive and money needs attention. And then I'm going to tie this, this powerful story that, that all women are going to agree with. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna, there, there's nothing wrong right. with what I'm saying. This is all beneficial, positive stuff here. Yeah. Whether the person acts on it or not will determine their ultimate result that they get from it. That's true. But just being told that they're redefining the words of helper. You know, we've looked at the help as a lesser person. Right. But that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. If I need someone to do my taxes, I need someone who's as strong or stronger than me in that particular category. If I need help with my finances, I need to go to someone who has more money than me or as much money as me. Yes. If I want to build a successful business, I need to go to someone who has a successful business, either as big or bigger than mine, period. Mm -hmm. oh, so, yeah, that's, so that's the woman to the man. That's the woman to society. That's the woman to resources. Just because Adam was given responsibility and care and protection and guard, right? The, the woman has just as much authority over those things because she has the ability to multiply it mm. and be fruitful. So the last thing that the woman is, is an incubator. Yeah. The, the woman has the ability to multiply anything, give anything to a woman. And if she understands her authority and her role, in this world and her purpose, she will multiply anything, any resource, anything, promise. So when a woman understands this, she's able to now provide even that much more value to the marketplace, especially in a global crisis that we're in right now. Mm. So, so that's how I answer that question of how, what can people be doing right now, right? And before we end, I'm gonna give some tangible stuff as well, but, it's the mind first, mm -hmm. it, it, how you perceive a thought, your, your precepts, mm -hmm. right? Your concepts, your ideas, your philosophy, that is all getting affected right now when yeah. we're going through a crisis. So you have to redefine certain words. You have to redefine certain things. For example, the word crisis, the Japanese people, their, their word for crisis means opportunity. Yeah. Interesting. This is insane. I like that. So, so when there's a disease, when there's a mm -hmm. storm coming, they're like, they look at it and they say, opportunity, mm. opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's how we Americans should be looking at this crisis an opportunity to grow yeah, an yeah, opportunity absolutely. to rebuild, to mm -hmm. re restore whatever it is that we lost. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I agree 100% because I do think that that's what we've been given. We, we've, we've been, it's like we're, we're having a, a chance to hit like the reboot button, 
you know, on a computer. It's like, yeah. okay, let's reset and restart and, and get back to figuring out what is important. And I, and I love how you're reframing this for women because um, we are, we are powerful beings and that we just sometimes uh, forget that or we just have, you know, we're, we're whatever, you know, culture, you know, is, has taught us to think that we're, you know, less than somehow. But I love that looking at it from that perspective of the helper as, you know, it's like, yeah, we're like human 2.0. So, <laughs> so I like, I really, I really like that, that we can, um, we can be uh, the solution. And it's just a matter of, you know, just get the confidence and then get the knowledge from someone like you who can help uh, help us to really start leaning into that and really understanding what it is, what is our responsibility? What can we do to truly help our families? So um, I know a lot of what you teach, you, that's why you have a whole YouTube channel because you explain like all these concepts and it, and it uh, is, um, how, how would you say it's, 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 uh, simple but not easy, but or or, or you know something like that. Because I, I mean, I know I, I've I've seen you uh, describe it, but is there a way to maybe just give a little a little hint uh, about what is involved and um, to to someone who's maybe never heard the term like velocity banking, for instance? You know what? Right. I know it's hard to do without a whiteboard, maybe mm -hmm. explaining <laughs> it, but <laughs> but if we could right. do it best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for for people who are hearing the velocity banking concept for the first time or infinite banking. So stepping away from the uh, spiritual and mindset stuff and going right into the tangible, logical financial data, the, the issue that we have is understanding how does one manage their finances? How does an individual pay off debt? Mm -hmm. Debt is probably the most critical component in a person's finances. Mm. And it is, it is also one of the most powerful tools that an individual can use to accelerate their finances, build a kingdom, and become successful in a society that is debt driven. Mm. So the reason why I target older individuals is because these people have grew up in a time where money actually had value, okay? Right. Prior to 1971, yeah. our money was backed by gold, a tangible asset. Right. So for the last 50 years, right, we've got, what, two more generations of people that are growing up in a society that money is no longer tied to an asset. If right. you look at any US bill, it'll say this is legal tender for debts, mm. both public and private. Look at any dollar, five dollar, ten dollar, twenty, fifty, hundred dollar bill. You're gonna see debt on it. Mm. So what the first thing all people need to understand is that all money in the US economy and abroad all money is debt. All of it is debt. Mm. Meaning the intrinsic value of that piece of paper is zero. Right. Has no value. Now, how do I make sense of that if I get paid on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis this money that has no value yet I'm able to use it to buy resources and things like that? Right, right. Okay. So in order for you to really understand how money works, you first have to get the fundamentals down of the society of which you live in. So we understand that all debt is, uh, all money is debt, has no value, great. Now, being that I'm in debt, because your average American, almost every single American will either accrue debt, uh, consume debt, or are in debt, very few are actually debt free. Right. Very few people. So. This right now, I'm talking to all people who are in debt. And now we have to define debt. Is all debt bad? Or are there some debts that are good? Some debts that are bad? 
when you're living in a debt driven society that is implying that there is some form of debt that can be effective for the individual, meaning good. Right. I can use it to my advantage and it'll help me grow. Yeah. Now, even going into a time where, where money was backed by uh, a physical asset, mm -hmm. I used the Bible to back up that debt is not all bad. Mm -hmm. In fact, the very financial system that God uses in his own kingdom is called tithing. Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this almighty God is requiring, is demanding that his people, us, pay a tithe to his kingdom a fee to basically operate in his territory mm -hmm. and grow it and multiply the resources. So if the manufacturer, the creator gives us these tools and resources, technically we're already in debt to the king, to the owner. Mm -hmm. And the owner is requiring a 10% payment every single year annual, right. a tax. Okay. So you're restoring a debt. That debt can never be restored, by the way. Mm -hmm. So you're always going to be technically in debt <laughs> if you're you know, in that belief system. Right. If you're not in that belief system, you have a U.S. government that charges tax. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay tax, you end up in debt. Yep. Okay, so that could be a bad debt. <laughs> right? So debt will always be around. No way of getting rid of it. Yeah. Okay. It's part of your society. It is a way for people to grow faster, more effectively, and manage resources. It is a measuring stick. So God has his measuring stick, which is called tithing, to test somebody's faith mm -hmm. with his resources. Yeah. The U.S. government has their system, their measuring stick. It's called credit, mm -hmm. credit score. It deems you credit worthy. Right. If you tithe in the kingdom, you're worthy. If you give taxes to the United States government and have a good credit score, you're worthy of having somebody else's money in your management, right. under your management. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, for majority of Americans that have been mismanaging money, right? This, this, mm -hmm. The definition of mismanagement is just, you know, the untimely unfortunate, ineffective, inefficient use yeah. of another person's resources. The Bible calls it wickedness, mm. right? We, we can just call it mismanagement. Yeah. So if a household, a personal household has been mismanaging money, we have to figure out a concept that is relevant to the 21st century that I could apply to help someone become a good manager, mm. or as the Bible would call it, a good steward. Right. Here's where velocity banking comes into the equation. So now that we've kind of got the framework here, right. the next part is understanding the difference between how debt is calculated, mm -hmm. meaning interest, what mm -hmm. you actually pay when you borrow another person's resources. Right. You have simple interest, you have amortized. Amortized will always be more than simple interest. Get that, just kind of lock that in amortized interest rate has the potential to triple or be more than what the actual rate is. For example, if I have a half a million dollar property at 4% over a 30 year period, that 4% amortized over 30 years, the amount of interest that you'll pay on that half a million dollars is about an additional half a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll pay you'll pay almost two and a half times the actual principal for which you borrowed money. Yeah. That's amortization. Mm -hmm. So 4% ends up looking like 4,000%, yeah. 400%. Right. <laughs> right. So there, so there's a bit of a scheme. Yeah. It's a financial scheme. It's a legal financial scheme, but all in all, it's a scheme that keeps Americans from producing mm -hmm. more effectively Right. because the lender is greedy. Okay. So in order for me to alleviate myself from that two and a half times that I'm going to pay, mm -hmm. the concept that everybody knows is to make extra payments yeah. on that property. Right. So any and all extra money I have left over after all my bills are paid goes into the property 
and that helps me pay down this half a million dollar mortgage in say 15 years right. or maybe 20 years. So I save 10 years off the back end. Maybe I end up paying 250,000 in interest as opposed to half a million dollars in interest. Right. Right. Everybody knows this concept. Very simple, extra payments, mm-hmm. right? Paying extra. Well, 20 years is still a long time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's my whole life. I'm 24. Yeah. That's so right. 20 years is a long time. 15 years is long. Is there another effective way for me to get out of this bad debt so that I can actually build wealth for my family? Here's where velocity banking comes into the equation, talking about simple interest. The difference between amortized and simple interest regarding debt mm-hmm. is your interest on a debt that is simple interest is calculated daily. So 4%, right? say I have a half a million dollar debt, same debt, half a million, 4% amortized, half a million, 4% simple interest, right? What you have to do is you take the 500,000, you times it by 4%, you get a number. You then take that number and divide it by 365 days. You now have a daily periodic interest rate that you'll get charged. Mm. So all velocity banking is doing is having individuals, Americans go and use their credit score to apply for a simple interest debt called a credit card, a line of credit or a home equity line of credit, Mm. three different banking tools, banking products. And we're going to use the bank's debt, the bank's money to pay this amortized debt by making chunk, big chunk payments, which is going to knock down the overall interest Mm. that I'm going to pay regardless. Right. Right. So what I'm doing is paying it in advance. Right. So with an amortized debt, the interest is front loaded on an amortized debt. Yeah. With simple interest, the interest needs time to accrue right. by the day. Right. So if I have this half a million dollar debt over here amortized at 4% and say I got a line of credit for maybe 50,000 at 4%, 5%, whatever the number is. Yeah. Understand that that 4 or 5% even if it's a higher interest rate, 10%, let's say is going to be a hell of a lot cheaper cost of Mm. borrowing than this 4% amortized debt. Mm. So all velocity banking doing it, all velocity banking is trying to do is reduce the amount of interest that a person pays on all of their debts overall, consumer loans, personal loans, credit cards, uh, car loans, home loans, any type of loan. Velocity banking is trying to offset the interest cost by borrowing money at nearly 0% or zero cost and retain the person's cash flow, that money left over that they would have originally used to make extra payments. Mm -hmm. See, as great as a strategy it is to take your extra money and pay off debt, the problem is when you get to the end of the road, when you pay off that mortgage, say 10 years earlier, 15 right. years earlier, you're broke. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have a paid off property. Yeah. But now you have to start from zero. Yeah. You have to start saving up money again. Mm. That takes time. Time yeah. is money. Yeah. So what Velocity Banking does is eliminates that time to save money. And we're now going to leverage our credit worthiness with the U.S. government to acquire debt at low interest rates, low cost, and offset our borrowing costs to, to obtain debt freedom, right? And preserve all my cash in the process, never lose it, and end up with a higher credit score with mm. the ability to have more capital, more leverage to then use that debt to now acquire assets, mm. things that pay me money. Yeah. So Velocity Banking first deals with a person's bad debt. We try to get them out of bad debt. Right. 
and then we get them to accumulate good debt, such as assets, you know, such as a business, uh, a physical business, e-commerce, stocks, forex, uh, real estate. Mm-hmm. You know, like 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 uh, apartment units, Investment. maybe yeah. even a single family home at yeah. at the least. Mm-hmm. So anything that produces income, velocity banking shows you how to use debt and not pay anything in interest, no cost. Right. And actually, the tax code is the final piece here. Mm-hmm. The U.S. government, because the U.S. government is a debt-driven society, you are incentivized to use other people's money. Mm. to grow your money. That is their measuring stick to determine how worthy are you as a U.S. citizen. Mm. No, it was a long explanation, but that's you know the <laughs> best way I can do it. And yeah. I've got videos that are twice as long, twice <laughs> the explanation long. And it takes a lot. You know, yeah. it's a lot. But if you take the time, just like with anything, mm-hmm. put time into anything, you'll begin to learn and understand it. Right. You know, so being able to just expose people to this new way of, thinking which mm-hmm. is really not new at all yeah. it's not new at all yeah. it's been going on for the last 50 100 years mm-hmm. you know and ever since the, the beginning of time right like i yeah. said god's system is based off a debt-driven system as well to a degree mm-hmm. yeah right he has infinite resources so he's never in debt he's the yeah. lender <laughs> we are the we are the the borrower mm-hmm. we're the, the steward and if we're a good steward a good borrower then we're never slave to the lender yeah. See, I'm not a slave to God right. just because I borrow his resources and use it. No, he actually rewards me mm-hmm. for good management and good stewardship yes. over his property. Right. And all he asks for is 10% back of whatever I produce. And I get to keep mm-hmm. the 90. Yeah. And I know as a good steward, as a good kingdom man, that really the 90 ain't mine either, nor was the 10. It's all his. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just managing for managing. the time being. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. You know, until I return to my homeland, so to speak. You <laughs> right. know? Um, so, yeah. So, um, how do you actually work with uh, people? So, because, because if you're listening and, you know, and you're like, maybe like, yeah, I kind of get it, but, oh, I, I don't think I can, I definitely know that I'm not going to be able to do this on my own. So, <laughs> right. I'm going to need somebody to hold my hand to make sure I'm doing this right. Um, yeah. What how do you work with people and, and what would be the best way for someone to, to get in touch with you? Yeah. So I, ha- I, uh, I've created courses by this time now. Um, predominantly I do one-on-one financial consulting or financial coaching and I just walk people through. I, I, I teach, you know, I get you to learn, you educate, and then so you can return, be a cheerful giver. And that's the end goal. Be a mm-hmm. cheerful giver, be debt free yeah. and, you know, have that financial freedom, that financial independence. So um, people can visit my courses and my resources that I offer on my website. It's denzelrodriguez.com. It's my first and last name. So that's where people can find uh, where to actually purchase and enroll in a course or, or program such as like a one-on-one consulting. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the public and for everyone to get exposed to what it is I actually do and how I do it and when and how much and how mm-hmm. long and how effective is on my YouTube channel. Same thing. You just type in Denzel Rodriguez or even just Velocity Banking. I'll pop up more than likely. You'll see my videos. You'll start getting exposed. So I try to get people to get exposed to the concept first, start learning about it. Got a ton of videos there. And that helps people really um, see and, and visualize because I use a whiteboard and I just walk people through numbers. That's all we're doing is, is we're just walking you through real life scenarios, real life mm-hmm. cases of how someone can implement these financial concepts in their household to, to better their financial position overall. So that's how I um, go about doing that. And it's been, it's, it's a ton of fun. Um, There's the, the results that people get is in, is insane because of how effective they're being with their money. Mm -hmm. Um, If you understand how to use $1 more than once, you'll be very successful in this U S economy, you know, but for, for as long as you think that $1 equals $1 Mm -hmm. then you're forever stuck in this sort of matrix, you know? Awesome. Well, I appreciate you being here today and um, sharing all this awesome information. And I think this is, 
actually really is a perfect time for people to really get this concepts, understand them, and especially especially for, for women and for moms in particular to do this because um, if, you're, if you're home anyway and you've got internet access, go on YouTube and start learning it because that right. way you're, you're going to be prepared to take advantage of opportunity, as you mm. said. This is, and look at it as an opportunity right now and not a crisis. Of, and, speaking, and, speaking of opportunity, um, you know, I, I always like to lead by example and be a role model in my company and my life and, and personal and business. Um, currently on my YouTube channel, people who would, you know, watch my videos, but for those that may not go, I just want to extend an offer that I've been doing on my channel, which is, I, you know, I have a velocity banking course for beginners, for starters that I, I charge money for. Mm -hmm. And, uh, due to the crisis, I've been offering that program to all police officers, military of all branches, mm -hmm. medical and first responders, um, mothers, mm -hmm. <laughs> mothers, uh, pretty much like people who are on the front lines dealing with the crisis. So like if you're a scientist, if you're an engineer, right. you're someone that's dealing with the crisis, you're doing something to improve it. Yeah. So just to remind you, police officers, military of any branch, mm -hmm. firefighters, yeah. medical and first responders, um, and mothers, I'm actually offering that course for free and it's a one year subscription that I, I do charge money for, but I'm giving it for free so that people can get exposed now while they're on lockdown, stuck in their home. Yeah, exactly. Get exposed to it now, start learning, so that when we get out of the crisis, you'll have a actionable plan mm. to move forward with once we get out of the crisis and even during yeah. the crisis. We don't know how long it's gonna be. Right. So re-education, realignment, figuring out your purpose, and then uh, stepping into some tangible concepts, okay. you know, and, and, and being that I'm a financial guy for anyone listening, if you lost your job, there's going to be stimulus uh, packages coming out. Yeah. If you're a business owner, you can go to SBA.gov. Uh, they have what's called an economic injury disaster loan. Mm -hmm. If you apply now, you could potentially receive grant money that you do not have to pay back for the first six right. months and will yeah. not accrue interest more than likely. Yeah. And that's like perfect for the small business owner. They need to hear this. Yeah. You know, so I just wanted to, you know, get that out there for right now. <laughs> but um, so for anyone that wants that free course, they just reach out to me. Uh, my email is denzel at builder to contributor.com, all one word. Okay. And yeah, let's get to work. Awesome. Well, and for those of you listening, and if you do not have a pen or something right now, don't worry about it. It will be in the show notes. So I will have all that information. And that is an amazingly generous offer. So thank you so much for, for doing that for folks, because yeah, this is an absolutely perfect time to get your, get this understanding in so you can get your finances, not only in order, but really poised to grow, to be able to help out your families and for and to build that kingdom right here so oh yeah awesome so thank you so much for being here and for all of you listening and watching um thank you for doing that as well and i as always encourage you to um, not to miss any episodes so to be able to do that make sure that you are subscribing on the podcast channel of your choice and uh, also subscribe to my youtube channel which is gloria rand video and until next time, I, as always, wish you uh, to be able to live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically.